today we will be talking about tools. Tools, you know, tools. What is a tool? A tool is an object that you can use to solve a problem. You know, there's lots of problems you can solve with your hands, but sometimes things get a lot easier with a tool. There are many different tools. Even some things you wouldn't even know are tools. Remember, a tool is anything that helps you do a task or solve a problem. So there's hammers and screwdrivers. They're for fixing. Um, spoon, fork, even a cup. That's for eating and drinking. You can make art or marks with marker or paintbrush or any of those kind of tools. You can cut with scissors or knife or a bunch of other stuff. Saw, even. Instruments or tools. Uh, violin, saxophone, ukulele, all kinds. Um, and then there's, um, you know, you can take pictures, photographs with uh, a camera or even your iPhone. Some tools have um, a single purpose, like scissors, they cut, um, but you can cut lots of different things. So one purpose, but lots of different things. Other tools might have multiple purposes. For example, Q-tips. They can clean your phone and, the sp and your computer keyboard, but they can also paint small dots. I've done that. Or still there are um, tools that do one thing but can do it in a variety of ways. Uh, for example, a paintbrush. It's used primarily to uh, paint, um, but you can paint in broad strokes. You can paint uh, little tiny marks. You can paint with acrylic, paint with watercolor. So again, same purpose, same task, but in many different ways. So lots of variety in tools. So how does the brain learn to use tools? Well, uh, for the most part, first step, the brain notices something that's interesting and has an idea. What can I do with this? What else can I do with this? And then the brain makes a plan plan for how to carry out that idea and that may or may not involve a tool. So um, you have your idea, choose your tool, and then uh, get to work. And along the way the brain gets feedback. Feedback from eyes noticing, feedback from hands moving. Let's say that your brain decides that it might like to make a turkey. Hmm, how could I do that? Hmm, well, um, I could buy one from the store. Um, I could draw one. Ooh, that. All right, so what do I need? Need some paper? I need some, some I, I need a tool. Uh, I can't draw with my finger. Not if I wanted anybody to see the turkey. So I'll think about what tool I might want. All right, let's, let's say I choose a marker. So then I have to think about, well, how do I use that tool? Um, can I watch someone else do it, either in real life or on a video? Is it something that someone can tell me the steps for using and I can have the verbal motor plan in my head? Or maybe, or maybe my brain really wants the steps just really broken down. Pick up the marker, bring it to the paper, and 
make a picture in my brain of what I think it might look like and use my tool to try to create that image. Let's say I want to make a mark on this paper. I got my thumb, pointer, middle finger. Pinch my marker. Draw my line. Now let's say I want to use my second tool. My scissor. I am going to put thumb in one hole pointer and middle in the other hole. Pick up my paper. Open. Advance. Squeeze. Open. Advance. Squeeze. Open. Advance. Squeeze. Every snip. It's just a snip and hold, or a squeeze and hold. Not pulling, not ripping, not twisting. Just a up and down, squeeze and hold. Open, advance, squeeze and hold. Open, advance, squeeze and hold. Just like that. Here's another tool. Um, pointer middle, pinch, tip down, dip in my paint, or my water in this case, and then I make a very light mark. Ooh, it looks so nice. Ooh, it looks so nice. I did not have to push hard at all. If I push too hard on this kind of material, it makes a scratch. That's where the feedback comes in handy. I can hopefully feel that I've contacted the surface and I can use my eyes to see that the mark is good enough. Gonna press too too heavily, or that will make a scratch. Or let's say I'm working with a hammer to fix my table. If I hammer too hard, I might break the table. So that's where it really does matter how hard I squeeze, how hard I hit, and I practice. Sometimes I might hit too hard. <laughs> Sometimes I might break the table. That's okay. That's how we grow our brains. But now, here's the thing. When the brain is doing all of this, brain, eyes, hands, all have to work together. And in fact, the brain gets feedback about this whole process from the hands. So the, the hands. So the hand is doing its thing. The eyes see what the hand's doing. The hand feels what the hand is doing with the tool. Sends a message back to the brain. So if the brain is busy noticing that conversation between hand and brain, it might go to the background. And ooh, without that feedback conversation, the brain is working so extra hard the brain can get tired. Many brains feel tired when they're using tools. Well, I'm tired using my camera tool. Anyway, so um, how do we make this easier so our brain doesn't have to get so tired? Well, lots and lots of practice. Practicing with the same tool, practicing with different tools, practicing with the same tools in different settings. Practice is how that conversation between brain and eyes and hands gets easier and easier. What tools will you use today? Have fun.